welcome to this week's episode of Not D&D, which is brought to you by EN World Live. I am your host, Jessica, and with me this week, we have Chris. Chris, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. So great to be here. Really excited. I am also excited because I was introduced to your absolutely gorgeous uh, game. Well, gorgeous maybe is the wrong word. Maybe more trashy game is the best <laughs> yeah. way to describe it. Uh, 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 someone that listens to the show wrote in a while back and said, hey, have you heard about Raccoon Sky Pirates? It's this game I, I backed on Kickstarter a while back and it's fantastic. You should have Chris on to talk to them. And I said, okay, I will. <laughs> so this is why we are here today. Uh, so um, the title alone, if it doesn't sell you, uh, I, don't, I, I don't know if you should be listening to this podcast, but Raccoon Sky Pirates, is the game that we're going to be talking about today so thanks so much for giving it the time to come and talk to us if you are watching us live you can join in the conversation uh put your comments in the chat and we'll pop them up on screen so uh please do feel free to join in and if you're listening to the podcast any things we're talking about we'll put the links to in the show notes so you can just click through and have a look at it there um so before we get into it chris talking uh, about the game uh, i'd like to talk a little bit about you if that's okay uh so i always ask uh guests what their first um tabletop rpg experience they remember having was so can you remember your first game yes um advanced dungeons and dragons maybe Classic. even the blue box but yeah oh. ni- like 19 19- I want to say 84, <laughs> so yeah. a long time ago. I was a little while much ago. too young for that stuff, but it was so awesome at the time. Yeah. Amazing. So open the door to role-playing games and things. Um, and you, it's fair to say that Raccoon Sky Pirates is a little more rules light. It's not quite as crunchy as D&D. Is that fair to say? That's very fair to say, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when did you start exploring kind of more rules light games or systems that are different from like a classic D20 sort of game? For the longest time um, in the 90s, I, I had this wonderful group and we met, you know, we were young, so we met like eight hours a week and Amazing. we played this game that was, the rule book was probably a very traditional button down rule set from before story games, uh, but mm-hmm. the, the guy running it, a dear friend of mine, barely used those rules at all. So mm-hmm. it was my, I didn't, no, I was being introduced to story games at the time, but I was. But then the, the, the game that really kind of blew my mind was Night Witches by Jason Morningstar um, that introduced me to Powered by the Apocalypse mm-hmm. and just the idea of emulating a story instead of um, simulate, trying to simulate reality. And it was amazing. So, yeah, that was great. Fantastic. That sounds great. I, I also had a group like that in my early 20s. We'd we'd meet up every Friday and play like three or four hours of role playing games. And then we'd meet back up on Saturday and spend like from midday to like midnight just playing different games the whole time. So it's great. I love that when you have a gaming group like that. Uh, it, it's always such a great time and a great memory. And you get to try out so many different games when you have groups like that, I find, because mm-hmm. people are more willing to be like, hey, I've, I've got this. Let's try this out. Um, so I'm also, awesome that you had that experience. Um, so I want to ask you, when did you start uh, creating games? Because it sounds like you had a great gaming group, so you're playing a lot of games and you know getting involved pretty running games. But how did you decide to start you know, making them yourself and, and putting them out there in the world? Well, I, I had an older brother who was a game designer and he kind of introduced me to the idea that you can even do that, that human beings <laughs> make these things. And, <laughs> and his first tabletop role-playing game was uh, impenetrable. It was so like, it was very, very crunchy. And, okay. and the prose was hard to get through, but I adored mm-hmm. it and I idolized him. And I think that was what introduced me to the idea. And then um, I was fiddling around with little systems, but Raccoon Sky Pirates was the first thing that I actually made that was a complete game. Like I made a hack of um, uh, Ashen Stars by Pelgrim Press, and mm-hmm. that was a lot of fun, but it wasn't a complete game, you know? It completely messed with it and turned it on its head, but it still needed that other game to make it. So I think really the first game I made is the first one I published. Although I made it as a six page thing that was much lighter and much uh, uh, more fast and loose. And Mm -hmm. then I did the Kickstarter and then I agonized over how to actually make it fun. 
or fun for strangers yeah absolutely i mean let's do, well that's that's a great segue to talk about the game so let's let's talk let's talk about the game so uh the kickstarter kind of exploded uh i noticed i noticed in your stretch stretch goal section you titled it as something like uh this has really got out of hand so this is what we're doing now <laughs> <laughs> and you yeah, have yeah. Like four or five stretch goals and i could just tell as somebody that creates kickstarters i could almost picture you behind the scenes going I didn't think it was going to get this money. Oh, the best, you know, I could see that happening. So what is, is that? Totally. Um, yeah. Yes. Very accurate. Um, you know, it was Zine Quest and I'd never done a Kickstarter before. And I had, like I say, I had made this game that was just for my local gaming group at, here in Columbus, Ohio. And then I was like, you know, I think it was a lot easier for me to prepare mentally for the idea of not funding. Uh, yeah. than for the idea of actually funding much more than I than my very modest goals, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I, you know, and 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 for anybody who's done a Kickstarter, you know, there's like if it funds, it's like a huge adrenaline boost. And I was just I'm bipolar anyway, so I was like high, and I was like, uh, I guess I need stretch goals. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody do this. Nobody do a, a Kickstarter the way I did it. Um, <laughs> but Zine Quest is cool because you can you can come in with very modest ambitions. Um, I, I, a, a person that I consider kind of a mentor for me, mm -hmm. uh, Avery Alder, had said, oh, yeah. um, "Make sure you account for shipping, the shipping costs." Mm -hmm. And I totally didn't do that uh, because oh, no. I, I my, well I had for a Zine. There's like mm -hmm. a, a ship flat in mm -hmm. envelopes, but not for a box set. And mm -hmm. I'm a sucker for all the little material components, so it became a box mm -hmm. set with the with the cards and the die. And, um, and 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 I think that was a stretch goal. Each of those was a stretch goal, and mm -hmm. then I did a uh, stretch goal for additional rules as well. Yeah, it was a it was a rush. It was uh, a, a nice situation to be in, but I really advise anyone to try to prepare both for not funding and for funding much more than you get, mm -hmm. and just have a plan. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I think I think that's that's great advice. I went at it like uh, a raccoon actually. Now that yeah? I think about it. Yeah. Well, you know, how per yeah. how perfect for this game because that's that's the that's the vibe and the energy of it. I think it's perfectly titled because you say raccoon sky pirates you're like I feel like I know what we're going to be doing already. Um but it, in case people are unsure still from the title, uh how do you introduce it to people? What's the kind of elevator pitch? Okay. Uh yes, the elevator pitch you are you and your friends play raccoons. You start in the junkyard where you build an improbable flying ship out of junk that you find around you. And then you fly it across town at night, find a freestanding suburban house, get in, steal everything you can, and try to fly back to the junkyard without exploding. But you're raccoons, so things keep going wrong. And you don't really know what you're going to do from one moment to the next. Of course, that makes perfect sense. And that is exactly what I, I pictured from the title. So yeah, perfect, it's sold. It's no misrepresentation there. Um, so we're playing raccoons. How does or possums creation... or other trash or... animals? But sorry, go on. Oh, excellent. Okay, good to know. How, so how does character creation work? How do we <laughs> what's on our character sheet? Who, who are we going to be when we're being these various trash mammals? <laughs> right? Yes. So <laughs> there are six raccoon character sheets six possum character sheets and six others, rats, pigeons, roaches, and they're already pretty well defined. Like each one mm -hmm. has a vibe. Each one has three uh, um, approaches that they can take. Mm -hmm. So then you just go through in sort of a Powered by the Apocalypse way, you have a couple of pick lists, uh -huh. you check off what your look is, what your personal goal is that you want to accomplish tonight, and, um, and then one relationship with one other raccoon or mm -hmm. other trash animal. And mm -hmm. then you answer a couple questions, like you 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 ask the other raccoon a question, they help you answer it and you write that down. And then you write down what is one thing you want to steal and how could that improve life in the junkyard? Um, and then that's it, you've got a complete character. And then everybody joins together to make the ship. Mm -hmm. So the ship is called mm -hmm. the, the dumpster fire and <laughs> it is, it's made out of several things, but three of them are a, a wrecked car, a home appliance and an old carnival ride. And so you pick okay. one from a list of three for each of those, and mm -hmm. that gives you certain special abilities that the ship has. So, and, then, and you decide how it floats, because there's a whole list of different things that could make it float, and, uh, and a couple other questions in the other ship. 
Fantastic. This feels great for me for like a one shot or if you have a player that's like interested in trying other things but is worried about, oh, I don't know the rules and character creation because you can just come to the table with this and be like, let's do it now. You've got a few choices to make so it can be customized, but it's not an overwhelming, complicated figuring out numbers and what's going on sort of situation. So I absolutely yeah. love the, the the character creation for this. Um, do you have any particular favorite characters anyone's made for this or ones that you've oh, you've made yeah. and played with? Are there any standouts? Yeah, uh, people have done great things with Brisket Jack, the swashbuckler Jack. raccoon, <laughs> um, and Rabies Eddie, who's this untamable beast of a raccoon, <laughs> who's like missing an ear, he's got scars. People have a, a lot of fun with those. Uh, the one that stands out from a recent play test, relatively not play, a, a playthrough, mm -hmm. um, was somebody played Rad, the indestructible roach. Mm -hmm. And the one of the looks you can pick for Rad is that, that you're faintly glowing with radiation. Um, so nice. so they had a lot of fun with that. They, uh, I mean, some people don't want to hear about roaches, so I'm very sorry to bring up insects, but mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, uh, they like made it look like the TV was on to try to fool the neighbors who had started getting curious about what was going on. So like they were, pulsing their radiation uh, glow in the window to make it look like some TV. Like they, they just went really crazy ham wild with it. So that was nice. Amazing. And that feels very much like the vibe of the game. It's just trying stuff out, being a bit mm -hmm. wacky and having a plan that's made on the fly. And if it doesn't really work, well, that's understandable because you are a raccoon or a roach or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. When you, when you act, I might be getting ahead of ourselves, but when you mm -hmm. when you act, you, you don't know what you're going to do ahead of time because you're a raccoon. Mm -hmm. So you you pick one of the, your three approaches. Like Brisket Jack has cunning, deft, and stylish, and then you roll, and then you have these twelve things you might do, mm -hmm. uh, and the approach just determines whether it's helpful or not. But other than that, you're really just finding out what you do at the time. And then as a player, you have a lot of agency to. Mm -hmm. narrate your scene based on what happened before and what you were trying to do and what your role said the raccoon does not exactly have a lot of agency because they're a raccoon but they're they're very effective at getting into trouble of course as is their charm um yeah. so the game is a gmless game uh as well um so i wondered if we could go through yeah how yeah what the mechanics are how do we structure a game because i know a lot of people um aren't used to playing gmless games so um there might be a bit of a well how do we do this if we haven't got someone in charge telling us what to do so so how does it work chris um so there are a lot of sort of board gamey elements that keep things on track there's five very structured scenes where in the first scene you launch from the junkyard and you go across a, a, a map of neighborhoods that is that's there on a, a Eight and a half by eleven sheet, and um, and then you're trying to get to one of these four houses. So that's the first scene, and the second scene you're just trying to get in the house, and the third scene you are in the house, and there's a, a maps for four houses. Most of them have two levels, and you're moving from room to room and seeing what you can find and steal there. And then in the fourth scene, you're going back across that neighborhood's map, trying to get back home. And uh, the fifth scene is sort of just a wrap up, like, like did you make it or not? And uh, you know, how many things did you get? But mm -hmm. the, um, so that, that keeps things on track where one player goes and then they just pick the next person to go. Mm -hmm. And you do that thing I was saying, I picked approach and rolling and then narrating what's happening. The, mm -hmm. when, when unhelpful things happen, you can play a card like is in the screenshot there to make it, uh, helpful anyway, but that sort mm -hmm. of leads to la later problems snowballing, or you can just say it's unhelpful, and usually you have to just say it's unhelpful, and that increments the problem track. There's a problem mm -hmm. track on the ship, and there's a problem track in the house. When the problem track in the house gets to, uh, I think it's four, uh, then mm -hmm. the residents wake up and they find you, and they chase you out of the house with a broom. <laughs> it, it, when the, when, so, and then you have to go to the next scene. Uh, yeah. When the problem track on the ship maxes out, it's got six steps to it, then the ship blows up. You know, things are going wrong, oh. a, a, a piece of machinery falling out before then, uh -huh. but then when it hits six, it's it's like the, the, the boiler has reached its limit. Yeah, okay. and then you fly, and then you just sort of waddle home with no treasure and, and plan a new one, a new one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
So, so these things like like they help determine what happens, and it it means that nobody has to be responsible for putting obstacles in people's way. Okay. Why did you choose to make um, the game kind of GMless and you know use those kind of board game elements with it? Why? What inspired you to to use those mechanics? I love GMless games. Um, mm -hmm. It turns out that there are some stories that are very hard to tell with a GMless game without putting mm -hmm. a lot of this kind of superstructure in place. Mm -hmm. The uh, but just the ethic of of a GMless game where nobody's calling the shots, nobody's saying, "Oh, now something bad happens to you." Mm -hmm. um, I, I I just love that as an ethic, as a philosophy. It turns out it works pretty well with raccoons because they are <laughs> anarchic, and uh, so long as you put some guardrails in place to make a an arc, a narrative arc happen. But mm -hmm. um, it, yeah, it was it, it, it's it's just a thing I've always wanted to make is mm -hmm. a, a game where everybody's sharing the storytelling responsibilities. Fantastic. And also, we we talked about you chose to do it for Zine Quest, was it? Um, what inspired you to do Raccoons Guy Pirates? Where was where did the idea come from? Did you wake up one night and there were raccoons in your house and you had to chase them out of the room? Like, Almost. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, there is. So it was a fall of 2020 and uh, our dogs woke us up in the middle of the night. Um, we sleep on the second floor. They ran to the back uh, door, this upstairs back door that goes out to this deck. And I looked out and I was half asleep and I couldn't see anything, it was dark. But my partner looked out and saw half a dozen raccoons waddling around, turning over little things and looking at them and putting them back down, <laughs> uh, pooping in the flower pot. And wow. um, it sounded to me like they had climbed down an anchor chain from some floating ship and gotten onto <laughs> our uh, uh, back deck. And one of them was, was was trying to get under the door, like trying to figure out how this door worked. And the dogs mm -hmm. were, you know, huffing raccoons through the crack at the bottom of the door. Mm -hmm. And if they had gotten in, it just would have been such a disaster. It would have been, <laughs> you know, uh, just Benny Hill music. And just like mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, I, I, so, so I think because I didn't see it, I had to make a game about it. Amazing. Visualize okay. it better. Yeah, and the Benny Hill theme tune is an excellent reference point as well because I can just picture it like there and the raccoons are running around, your dogs are there, and then you're running around after the dogs. <laughs> yeah, totally yeah. useless. Everything in, in fast forward. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the illustrations are really great in the book as well, and they kind of capture the the, the scrappy feel of it and also the the chaotic nature you mentioned. So people have written and saying they they kind of love the art style of it. Um, what was the inspiration behind the art and, and how did that process go? Um, well, I did the illustrations. So I, mm -hmm. I was really like, um, I think I was sort of feeling out the style as I went, but the scratchy mm -hmm. quality of that pen seemed to really fit with the scruffy, sc scraggly raccoons. Um, mm -hmm. And of course the black and white is not too far off from how raccoons look in full color. Um, mm -hmm. And it was a zine, so I wanted this black and white thing. But I also really wanted a handmade feel to it, mm -hmm. um, because, well, because the zine and and you know zines mm -hmm. go back to at least the '80s with the Xerox machines and all that. And I so I wanted it to have some some feel of hand to it, which made it mm -hmm. more work, but uh, but very worthwhile. Yeah, a friend of mine who uh, is new to role playing games, and they've been they've been listening to the show and talking about stuff, and they forgot. The, the word for like zine RPGs and they said you know like artisanal RPGs <laughs> and I thought that was an excellent thing and I think maybe we should rebrand as artisanal RPGs yes. and I was like yeah that's kind of what it is like you can tell somebody's like made this at home lovingly it's not like a mass produced yeah. kind of thing so yeah, yeah it does look nice and artisanal so uh, uh, yeah. great thank you <laughs> small batch like like whiskey or made or, or yeah, like high crisps. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. high quality, yeah. made with love, like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. fantastic. Um, so if um, people are kind of interested uh, in the game, like you mentioned, there's like just a PDF version, there's a book, or there's mm -hmm. a box set. What are kind of the, where can people get these, and what are the differences in and kind of what's available? You can get the PDF on itch.io, mm -hmm. um, and it has you know the PDF is good because you can print out multiple copies of the maps and and the character sheets and mark them up and, mm -hmm. and all that. Um, but it, 
comes with, so you need, you, I believe in there, there's a link to where you can get downloadable cards and just mm -hmm. play cards with the cards online. Um, the great thing about the box set, which you can get at hecticelectron.com. Yeah, you've got it, thank you. Um, is that it comes with an actual deck of cards and it comes with a raccoon die. A uh, little twelve-sided thing with with a raccoon on the twelve, and these sort of junkyard numbers, where every number is different, and it's just got yeah, thank you. It's got these great um, material components to it. It comes with that booklet and then these uh, printable play sheets. But if you buy it online, I mean, if you buy uh, the box set, then you can get a link to the PDF also, so you can print out more sheets, things like that. Fantastic. Um, if that, I think that's great in the US. In the UK, I have seen it's in some retail stores online. So if you're yes. in a different country, if you if you Google it, you might be able to find a local retailer near you as well, because that's where I came across it, which is so it great is, to see. Because sometimes been great for that. Sorry, to interrupt. Yeah, no. they've, they've been they've been distributing it to uh, uh, the UK and Australia, and I think some other places. So that's been fantastic. Yeah, so which is great to see because sometimes, like, uh, you know, zines you get that are in North America, you can't get outside of it. And the rest of us in other place in the world are like, but I want this. You can get this one. So people listening that have written in and said, you can only get this one in the US. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there we go. That's available there. Um, so in terms of kind of the rules, we've done, like, you know, the overview, the structure of the, of the five. Uh, you just got the D12. You've got the cards. If everyone's got, you know, they bought their copy, they're ready to play, what advice do you have for people that are, are playing this game for the first time and maybe playing a GMless game for the first time as well? I would uh, go with it, you know, get in character, <laughs> sort of mm -hmm. think like a raccoon. There are, you. some people play where they make an intention of what they'd like to do and then they roll and they see what they actually do. And mm -hmm. that can be fun. That's sort of a little more conventional and it can um, give you a feeling of a little bit more agency, but it might give you too much to narrate. Some folks mm -hmm. recommend, and I think I would recommend not having a single thought in your mind before you pick your approach and roll. Just have an approach, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm being a, a daring or swashbuckling or whatever and, and roll and say, okay, I just got this idea, I'm going to do X. And, and, and then I think it goes a lot uh, more smoothly if mm -hmm. you sort of give in to the randomness. It's mm -hmm. Give in to the randomness, just no thoughts, just vibes. Just, just vibes, right. totally. Yeah, yes. <laughs> just raccoon, just raccoon be chaotic, vibes. be raccoony. Yeah. And I think the, the great thing about this game is that you don't feel like you have to do things perfectly because I know some mm -hmm. people that are trying a new system or a new role-playing game worry about doing the right thing. But I think this game gives you the freedom to do whatever because it's like you're a chaotic raccoon. You're going to make silly choices. So, yes, good. Like if, if, if you make right. the wrong silly right. choice that's clearly chaotic, that's correct. Uh, right. So, right. yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Totally. There's um, I, the people, you know, it, it comes alive with the people at the table. So mm -hmm. um, if, if people get into their characters and get into sort of the mission of this heist, mm -hmm. this raid of a house, I think mm -hmm. a lot of stuff just emerges from that. It's been really great to see. So, Fantastic. Go with it. And do you have any other particularly great stories from from playtesting or playthroughs that you've done that, you, that you'd like to share with us, just to inspire people if they're they're trying to think about what their experience is going to be like? Yeah, yeah. The the um, I I think that. <laughs> what's been great has been when people raccoons the, the characters kind of um take a uh, uh like, like like take a hit for each other you know mm -hmm. uh the um the 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 maria triple xl is this like you know big beefy raccoon and <laughs> um uh she was like protecting kit it was the smallest, littlest raccoon. Hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. But all Kit wanted to do, so, you know, because you pick a goal at the beginning mm -hmm. and all Kit wanted to do was put on a vaudeville show. So Kit had wandered down <laughs> into the basement and was like, 
messing around with stuff like there were post travel posters down there or something. Mm -hmm. You know, people are just narrating this, and um, yeah. and the lights come on because the they they've reached the max of the of the problem track, and the residents have found them, and and the player's like, okay, I know I should be terrified right now, but for me, it's like the spotlight has just come on, and so I am I've got my little piece of pipe and whatever I'm using as a hat, and I'm just doing my number, and um and it was lovely, and like and then because everybody gets one move after the problem track maxes out. Uh, mm -hmm. So and then he was like, okay, then I get out of there. But um, <laughs> the, 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 I think they also had, um, they picked the carnival ride that was a zipper. So it had these, these uh, the idea was it could, it had these little carriages that could come down and scoop things out of the house. And they, okay. they just like, but to make it work narratively, they had to demolish a wall in the kitchen. And so <laughs> just the vis visuals of, this yeah. brick and drywall, everything going everywhere. And uh, uh, I, I think in that one, Brisket Jack also got his brisket. So that was good. That was you know, satisfying. The, the ship blew up in the end, but, it, but they didn't mind because, you know, they'd been there, they'd done it. They'd done what they wanted to. That's great. I'm great for the raccoons. I'm just picturing the poor residents of that house. They're going, the insurance company's not going to believe us. Like right. this dancing yeah. raccoon came in and then smashed our wall open. No, they're not going to believe us. I, uh, I don't amazing. think it's that much farther beyond where raccoons actually are now. Oh, really? Um, well, just like they're so good at getting into things. They're so mm -hmm. good at climbing. They're really mm -hmm. smart. If they mm -hmm. have this one kind of monolith, 2001 moment and get a flying ship i think we're in a lot of trouble this this rpg could become reality and could become training for people in that world right right, right. Um, valuable training yeah. amazing amazing um chris are there any questions i've forgotten to ask you or anything else you want to share or, or brag about the game or any closing thoughts about it um i <sighs> I love this game. I really am very gratified by the, the stories I've heard from people. Um, I think it's 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 different every time. So mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know. I just you know hope people have fun with it. Amazing. Thank you. I'm sure they will. I'm looking forward to running my first one shot of it for sure. Um, we're wrapping up, getting near the end. So if people had some questions to ask you that they they perhaps listened to the podcast or, or didn't get the chance to on the live, where's a good place to find you on the the internet? Would would Tumblr be a good place to get? Tumblr's in touch? good, yes. Mm -hmm. At Hectic Electron, I'm at Hectic Electron everywhere, but Tumblr's where mm -hmm. I'm uh, paying the most attention. Um, mm -hmm. And if you uh, come to my website, you'll see I also have a newsletter, which I forgot to mention earlier. But oh, um, it's like this all good vibes. Um, uh, I call it everlasting, never ending game night. So it's just about all the great things from tabletop. It's very positive. Fantastic. That sounds great. I'll take a look at that. Um, another question I have for you though, is, uh, do you have any tabletop RPGs that you'd like to recommend or give a shout out to? And the rules yeah. are, it can't be D and D cause this is not D and D and it can't be a game that you've made. Cause we've just spent a bit of time talking about one of your games. Yes, sure have. Um, I am deeply in love with apocalypse keys by Ray Najati, uh, mm -hmm. that had a Kickstarter last year, I think, and mm -hmm. is just wonderful and it's inspira big inspiration for my next game. And uh, Thirsty Sword Lesbians is just yes. so good. Yeah, so uh, um, they probably don't need the help. They're very well known already, but I love them very much. Yeah, um, if you don't know Thirsty Sword Lesbians and you are interested, we have an episode on Not d d in the archives, so you can go back and have a look at that interview there. Um, yes, two fantastic choices there. Thank you so much. Um, Chris, thank you again so much for your time, for coming on, for creating and sharing your game and giving up your time to talk to me. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you to everyone who has listened or come to watch. Uh, thank you so much for your support of the show. We'll be back next week. Uh, we have some great guests coming in September. We have Moonlight on Roseville Beach. We have Flabbergasted. We have Coyote and Crow. Uh, and that's just September. So you can check out on the website enworld.live any upcoming guests and the archive of all our previous episodes as well. Uh, but for now, I think that's all. I will say thank you and good night. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, Chris. Bye. Okay.